Now we're at the point now we're going to focus upon the Word of God. Uh, this message here tonight could be possibly directly toward you. I don't know your heart. I don't know your standing with God. But I guarantee you this, we all know somebody in the condition that we're going to go into tonight. And if you know somebody in this condition, or you yourselves in this condition, I'm going to tell you right now, all hope is not gone. Amen. There's still time to repent. There's still time to get things lined up. And there's still time to salvage what you can salvage. Amen. All right. uh, I believe this thing's wrapping up pretty quick. Uh, I'm surprised every day when I wake up and I see uh, that I'm still here on this earth. That the Lord ain't took me home. That's how close we are to this thing winding up. And uh, so uh, let's, uh, if you will, in your Bibles, turn to Hebrews chapter number 11. Hebrews chapter number 11. We're going to look here at uh, one verse, but we're going to kind of relate on this one verse pretty heavy. And this is a message that God gave me. And boy, how he thrilled my soul when I, he gave it to me. But I doubt if I will be able to give it to you folks like God gave it to me. Amen. In verse 25 of chapter number 11. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy pleasure of sin for a season. Oh that word season we're going to look at here a little bit tonight. A lot of things will happen in that time of season. Now we know uh, many things about the seasons that we have as far as uh, uh, the seasons that we have. We have uh, winter, which we are in now, then spring, then summer, then fall. And all these seasons that we have are, are, are set forth by the moon phase, you might want to say, the way the sun moves around the earth. And, and it has really nothing to do with cold weather. It's just how the moon and sun uh, move around the earth. But one thing about a season, it has a direct time when it starts and an exact time when it ends. Amen? And this time of season that we're going to look at tonight has a time when it starts and a time when it's going to end. Mm -hmm. But before we even start, let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace. Lord, we don't know the condition of the hearts here in this building. But I know you do. You know the hearts. You know what's going on in the mind of the people, the thought pattern right now. Lord, we ask that the Word of God go forth and pierce through every heart here. My heart especially. Speak directly to me because, Lord, I, I might not be necessarily in this condition, but I know folks who are. And, Lord, we need to be an encouragement. We need a love and compassion move upon the power of the Holy Spirit and do what we can do to help folks. But right now, Lord, open our minds and hearts to the Word of God. Help me be what I need to be for you. And I'm going to give you glory and honor and praise because you're worthy of it. And I ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, we, we read this one verse of Scripture. And we, we're, we're, what this is, it's in the Hebrews right here, is the Hall of Fame of Faith. If you want to call it that. And it's relating to Moses right here. It's, in verse 24 it says, By faith, by faith, Moses, when he had come to the years, refused to be called son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer the affliction of the people of God than to enjoy pleasure of a season. Now, I'm going to say this. As we go about our everyday life, most here don't even give a, a thought of their actions, a result of their actions. We don't think about about it. We don't, we don't think, you know, every word that comes out of our mouth has a repercussion to it. Every movement that we do has a repercussion to it. It's either bringing our children, our family, those around us closer to God or pushing them farther away. But yet we walk around every single day with not even a thought pattern, not even an iota of a thought pattern of what we're saying and what we're doing is affecting somebody else. And we're going to look at this right here. As Moses chose not to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, but he chose to suffer affliction. He just soon do that to enjoy the pleasure of a season. And I'm going to say this right, the pleasure of sin of a season. I'm going to say this right near, here, and I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, pleasure, uh, sin, uh, there's, there's pleasure in sin. I'm not going to tell you a lie that there's not. Preach it to us tonight, brother. Uh, Go ahead. I'm not going to separate tell you that a 
it's no, it's not joyful no more. You know, I mean, you don't get no pleasure out of it. Uh, sin is a pleasurable thing, and Satan uses that. He knows that we love sin. He knows we love the pleasure of sin, and that's the reason he throws it at us and and, and pushes us to it all the time because he knows uh, the sin itself. Uh, if we can get the pleasure off of it, we're going to seek and reach out and grab that with no thought pattern, no no uh, mental uh, thought about what it can do to our children, to our grandchildren, to our, our home, to our churches, to our community, to our, our family around us with no thought pattern. And we almost get to the point, I don't care what it does to them. It's me. It's me. I'm the one doing it. What they, what, it don't matter to them. It's my business. It doesn't matter. You can think that all you want to. But when you fall into sin and seek the pleasure of sin, my friend, it's affecting everybody around you, not just you. Amen. We need to think about that. You know, pleasure is a big tool of the devil. Pleasure will break up homes. Amen? Pleasure will, will uh, break up marriages. Pleasures will break up families. Pleasure will make you lose your job. Amen? A job that God gave you. Pleasure will make you lose your standing with God. Amen? Pleasure is dangerous. We like it though. I'm going to look a little bit about this season right now. Uh, over here in Hebrews, the writer, you know, we don't really know who was the author of, of Hebrews who penned it down, but we know who it is because all scriptures are inspired of God, so God himself wrote Hebrews. All right? And he said, uh, Moses just assumed aff uh, be afflicted with his people of God than to enjoy pleasure of sin for a season. Let's look at the season. Uh, while we're living in that time of the season, I titled our message, if you like writing titles down, Living in the Season. A lot of things happen in that season of pleasure and sin. The first thing we want to look at, do you know that... There is a residue of sin that has been in our life. Now, if I would say a residue, you say, what are you talking about, preacher? Residue was something or an after effect of something that had happened. Now, I don't know if you ladies ever caught a, a something on fire in your kitchen. Have you ever, anybody ever done that? Caught something on fire and smoked up the house right good? You know, if you walk by your countertops and even the fire's done gone, it's been extinguished and, and the pot's been thrown in the garbage, but you can go by uh, your kitchen table and you can take your finger, there's a residue of that smoke film that was in your house. It's the after effects of the fire that took place. You, has anybody ever had water damage? I know Debbie and them used to have water damage in their basement a lot when it rained real heavy. And, and some people get flooded in their house. The water might be gone and way gone, but you know what? There's a residue of that flood that was in your house. You can see it. You can smell it. There's an effect of those things that happen to your, to your life. Uh, that residue is something left by. But I'm going to tell you right now, there's always a residue of sin that has been in your life. The sin might be gone. You might get forgiveness of that sin, but yet there's a residue left over from that sin. Not necessary upon you, but that residue might fall upon your children and your grandchildren. A residue. You know, what a person does when he's in that season of sin. Now, I'm going to say this right off. When you get in that, that area where you, you break away from God and, and, and sin overcomes your life, and uh, where it used to be a, a God-filled home, uh, where it used to be the Bible read, and there used to be songs whispered from your lips uh, uh, about amazing grace and, and the blood of Jesus Christ, and, and sin overwhelms you, and the pleasure of sin takes you out for a season. No longer are you singing songs about the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. No longer are you reading the Word of God. No longer are you going to the house of God around God's people. But you're in a special season that you think you're in control of. My friend, when you get in that and sin overwhelms your life, I'm going to tell you right now, you'll start to act different than what you used to act like. You're no longer acting like a child of God. You're no longer 
hanging around people who love the Lord anymore. You, you, you're acting different. You talk different. You do things that a Christian should not ever do. But yet, in that time of season that you're getting pleasure from that sin and you're walking to way the way the devil wants you to walk, you're in a season where you're living not like you. It's not you no more. And I'm going to say this. If you're truly born again, truly saved as a child of God, there's repercussions for what's taking place here. Amen. During this time, that residue will fall upon your home. A lot of things happen in this time. You know, when, when unfaithfulness comes into the land of this season that you're living in pleasure, that residue will stay in your home forever. Now, you might get lined up with the Lord Jesus Christ, and you might beg God forgive you, and He'll forgive you, and you might get things straightened up between your husband. Uh, you might get stuff straightened up between your wife. Uh, you might get stuff straightened up between your children. But there's always, always, always going to be a residue there that's always going to come out. The devil's going to make sure that residue is always going to be there. Always going to be there. It's always going to be brought up. It's always going to have to be chewed on. It's always going to be dealt with. There's always a residue from sin. Amen? You know, residue of faithfulness to the Lord also has a residue that will lay upon your home forever. Amen? I'll get in that uh, on down this message right here. Anytime sin takes control of your life, there will always, 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 always will be some side effect of you getting away from the Lord. I know what people think. Our God is so loving. Our God is so merciful. Our God is so full of grace that He'll take care of all these problems. I'm going to tell you, we do have a God of grace. Thank God. We do have a God of forgiveness. Thank God. We do have a God of love. Thank God. We have a God of, of long, long suffering. Thank God. But I tell you, we're going to have to deal with that residue that we leave by being in the time of season of pleasure and the sin. My friend, be careful what you're into right now. I don't know, your home might be intact and you might be living the way you should. And, but you know, I guarantee you know somebody living in this time of season right now. They're not themselves, amen. They're not talking like they used to talk. They're not dressing like they used to dress. They're not hanging out with the people they used to hang out with. Now it's all completely different because they're in the land of season now and are seeking the pleasure of that sin for just a season. The Bible called it a season. That means there's going to be a beginning spot and there's going to be an ending time. That sin, pleasure of sin in that season will end. I'm going to tell you right now, it will end. Well, you know, you know there's a residue of sin. We know that. But you know what? When you get in that land in that season, there's always regrets in that land of season there. I ain't never met a person. I ain't never dealt with a person. I ain't never dealt with families back here in the office that, that got into the, that land and the season for a pleasure for a season and that there was not never no regrets that fell upon them. There's always regrets come out of that time of season that you're away from God. During this time when, when people get away from God, and I can take you to several people within our sanctuary right here, they had gotten away from God and, and sought after the pleasures of sin for a season and they got away and they drug their family away from the things of God drug them away from the word of God the singing of God the people of God and went into the sin of pleasure for a season and there they got their family in camp of Satan and all the demons of hell during this time of season when they're away the Lord will forgive them the Lord will restore them but a lot of times you might make it back but your child might not mm. amen I can drag you up people in front of you right now who got in the land of sin for a pleasure for a season that your children are not in church right now because of what they did in the season of the sea in the, in the pleasure for a season and they know they can tell you preacher if I didn't take my family away from the things of God if I didn't bow up on God if I didn't resist God and keep my family there they would still be in church serving God right now there's regrets there's regrets when you get in that land like that you know we let sin rule our, in our life and no matter how fun we think we're having it and we're just having the time of our life and you think and it ain't going to get no better. But I'm going to tell you when that season ends, there's going to be all kinds of regrets take place. Most of the time, when you're in that land and you're not going to church or serving God, somebody's watching. Yeah. 
Somebody is watching you. And I'm going to tell you what, and I'm going to let you know, it's they're watching because Satan's going to make sure they're going to see what you're doing. Hey, this here used to fly the blood-stained manner. This here used to say praise Jesus all the time. Used to stand up in church and say, I want to thank God for being so good to me. And they do all these wonderful things for me. But yet now you're out there in the world in the season and pleasure of sin in that season right now. Not thinking about God. No concern about God. No concern about His work. No concern about souls being saved. Uh, I'm forgetting all that, God. I don't care about that no more. I'm seeking for me and my pleasure in this time of season. And now there's always regrets. I see a lot of men with regrets that they got in that land and season, the pleasure for a season no longer has their, their wives with them no more. I've seen wives with the land of regrets because they cheated on their husband and they don't have their husband no more. No longer will their children look at them the same way. No longer will Momo and Papa be together and be able to see them together like, that, like they need to. Hey, there's a lot of things going on in the land of regrets there, amen. A lot of things happen during that time. You might make it back, but it wasn't worth it that they didn't make it back. Think about it. I know people lay on this altar begging God to bring their children back into church because they got away from God and they got into sin and they thought they had the world by the horns uh, by the horns right here and they're guiding sin the way they want it to go and all the time they're just dangling from the fingers of Satan and they lost their children on their way back to church. How awful that would be. I'd hate to think that my children wouldn't go to church because of something I did. That would destroy me. That would destroy me knowing that my children and their offspring, my grandchildren, will die and possibly go to hell because of something I did. There's regrets, my friend, when you get into sin. Now, I don't know, you might be in sin. You might be well on your way into that sin category right now. But you better back up and think about, is it worth the residue that's going to come along with it? The after effects, because I'm going to tell you right now, the pleasure that you're having will end. God will not allow it to continue if you're saved. If you're a child of God. That's a big if, ain't it? That's a big if. You're either going to, it's going to either end now or it'll end that day you split hell wide open. You'll know all about what God says and what God does then. Won't be no question about it then. Regrets in, in the land. Of Let me ask you tonight, do you have any regrets? There's a lot of folks in our churches today aren't what they should be. Amen. There's a lot of people in our churches could be a whole lot better for the Lord Jesus Christ than what they are. Amen. Amen. Is there regrets because your children are watching? Your grandbabies will be watching. Your brothers are watching. Your sister's watching. Your mommy's watching. Your daddy's watching. Your husband's watching. Your wife's are watching. You got any regrets? Living in the land and the season? Pleasure for a season? Just asking. That's just a question. Just a question I want to ask. I'm going to read over here in Hebrews chapter number 2, or 2 Peter. I'm going to go to 2 Peter. Chapter number 2 and verse 19. Now listen to what the Word of God says. While they promised them liberty, they promised them freedom, they themselves are servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome of the same that is brought into bondage. For, I, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, they're again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse to them than the beginning. You know, the Bible here is talking about people who escape the pollutions of the world. There's a lot of people who's churchy tonight. Amen? There's a lot of people who's religious here tonight. I don't believe everybody in this building is saved. I'm just going to tell you. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't believe everybody that's here tonight is saved. My, bit, my spirit doesn't bear witness with your spirit that, I, that you're a child of God. That's how we know. I can know. I can meet a complete stranger on the street, never seen before again. I can say they're saved. They're not. They're saved. Because my spirit bears witness with them that they are a child of God. I don't get that with everybody in the churches. I don't get that with everybody walks through the door. Although they'll praise God and they'll, they'll shout and they'll, they'll do things. They'll do this and do that. But I don't have that spirit. There's something wrong there somewhere. 
The Bible here says that after they escaped the pollutions of the world, and that's all the world is, is pollution, garbage, trash. Amen? Through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, through, through knowing Jesus, through knowing who He is, they escape the pollutions of the world, but yet they go back and entangle themselves with the very thing that God's against. So, buddy, it would be better at the end, at the worst for them than the beginning. The Bible here in verse 21 says, For it had been better for them not to even know the way of righteousness. <laughs> Then after that know it and turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. What's that scripture mean to you? <laughs> the Bible here says it'll be better for them not even know the way of the righteous, not even know the blood of Jesus Christ, not even know who Jesus Christ is, than to know it and reject it and live according to the worldly standards. That's what the Bible's saying. Are you living the way you should as a child of God here today? The Bible said it would be best you didn't even know Christ if you're not living according to the standards of God. It'd be better that you didn't even know Him. Huh? That's harsh words. That's harsh preaching right there. But a little dab ain't going to do you. Fire insurance ain't going to cut it. If you're saved, you'll live saved. You'll be saved. You'll love saved. You'll forgive saved. It ain't just when you want to, when it's convenient for you. It's all the time. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Not just on Sunday. The Bible says it'd be better if you didn't even know God. It'd be better if you didn't even know about the blood of Jesus Christ. Than to know it and act like the devil in the world. Think about this. It might not necessarily, this message not, might not necessarily be for you, but I guarantee you, you know somebody who used to fill the houses of God, do some work in the house of God. Now they're playing in the pleasure for a season, and they drug their family out into this time period, and something would ever happen. God said, It'd be best that you didn't even know me. Well, that's some strict... Now, we're talking about a loving God, a merciful God, a just God. Amen? Our God don't play games. In case you didn't know, He does not play games. He don't play church. He don't play religion. If you saved, you'll love Him, you'll commit, you'll surrender to Him. That's salvation. That's what He expects. Uh, over in Romans chapter uh, uh, 12 it is, I believe, verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, present your bodies as a living, a living, a living sacrifice. Holy! My land's holy! That's kicked out of our homes today, ain't it? <laughs> holy! Holy! acceptable unto God which is our reasonable service not a suggestion not a maybe maybe tomorrow I'll start I'll turn over new leaf tomorrow that's accepted bottom line what God expects of his people and if we ain't going to meet that the Bible says it'd be best it would have been better you didn't even know God. Know who Jesus Christ Know the way to righteousness. Know all about the forgiveness. Know all about the grace of God. The mercy of God. Then to turn your back upon the one who died for you. And live according to the world standards instead of the way God commanded us to live. Be better that you didn't know. A lot of regrets in that time. You know, I'll say this. If it is of God, it will last. Amen. 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 If it's of God, it will last. We see people come into our churches. We see people go in our churches. Come and go. And they'll come up and they'll fall upon the altar and they'll say some words. They might even get baptized. Out the door you go and bye-bye. You never see them again. Not of God. <laughs> It's so of God. God changed them inside here. Amen. There's a complete change in here. Not, not, not on the flesh. See, that's what the world wants us to do today. Whitewash it. Make it look churchy. Make it sound churchy. But it ain't churchy. Amen. That don't last. It's temporary. The flesh is temporary. Everything about the flesh is temporary. But when God deals with it, it'll last. Amen. 
That's how the Harmon and Jesses could preach and pastor all those years. And the Patty and Bill Beckett's and, and the Bob Elkisses and, and, and the other folks in the church that's been here so many years, years, years. I look back here at Brenda and, and back here, the sweet ladies on the back row back here. Just think, all those years. It's of God because it lasts. Let me ask you this. If what you got with it last, if the whole church depended upon you, would it be here tomorrow? Would it be here tomorrow? Just ask them. Would the light bill be paid? Would this piano get tuned? Would the things happen around the church if it, if it all fell upon you? What you do. If everybody in the church was just like you, would we have a church tomorrow? Should. Amen. But the love I have for Christ is the same love you should have for Christ. The love you have for Christ should be the same love I have for Christ. We all love the Lord together, striving for the goal to, to serve God and see His work done, see His name uplifted and glorified, right? If the church... What was that song that somebody had? If everybody in the church was just like me, what kind of church would your church be? Think about that. Well, my church would be a beautiful church, in because I am some kind of beautiful. Well, that don't pay the power bill. That don't see souls saved. Amen. We need some people that's going to get in the mud, in the dirt, and go out and soul win and win people to Christ and tell them how great God is and how much God loved them, that they're a sinner dying and going to hell. We need a pulpit that's clean and, and a preacher to stand off, clear up patch of ground and call sin what it is and don't care what anybody thinks about it. Amen. Just say, thus saith the Lord. Amen. And the people say, that's amen. Amen. We can't get off our stinking cell phones long enough to hear what God's going to tell us. Amen. Well, I tell you what, there's residue of sin in the season. There's residue. There's regrets. There's always regrets. It comes when you're in that season, seeking the pleasure of sin for a season. You come out of that season because it's going to end. There's going to be regrets because I am guarantee you, you might make it back. You might make it back to Jesus, but your children might not. Your lost husband, your lost wife, your children might not make it back. Can you live with that? And I'm going to tell you what, God's going to tell you and let you know every day why they didn't make it back. I can put people in front of you right now, and they can tell and testify unto God, my children ain't here because I got away from God. And sought the pleasure of sin for a season. Are you willing to, to deal with that? Well, I'm going to hit this number three right here. You'll reap what you sow while you're in the land of season. I'll reprint later. See, this is it's like a diet. We're all going to start a diet tomorrow. <laughs> Any of you notice tomorrow comes, you got good intentions? I'll start tomorrow. Yeah. And you'll start coming up with excuses. Well, we ain't got the right food to start fixing. And, oh, I forgot to buy my water to get started. And, well, this and that and this. I'll start tomorrow. Well, tomorrow ends up, I'll start Monday. Then the Monday comes up and says, well, I'll start fresh the first of the month. It never comes. People living in the season, they, if they are truly saved, the Holy Spirit's done dealt with them that they're doing wrong. And you know what they're, they're, they're dealing with God? I'm going to start, I'm going to start Sunday. I'm going to go and I'm going to repent. I'm going to get my life lined up and I'm going to get back in church. And that Sunday will come. They don't get out of bed. And I say, I'll start next Sunday. And next Sunday. Next Sunday. Hey, tomorrow never comes. It never comes. But you know what? When you're there... You'll have to reap what you sow during this time period. I'll say this again. God will forgive. Thank God for it. God will restore. But you'll have to reap what you sow while you're in that time of season. Wouldn't it be terrible? Now let me say this. Wouldn't it be terrible your child, possibly your grandchild, Possibly somebody in your, a son-in-law, a, a daughter-in-law, uh, maybe somebody that you're not even really thinking a whole lot of right at this time. At least you was the kingpin of when you would come, everybody else would come. 
And they're sitting here. Hey, we've had people come into church, raise their hand to be saved. And the kingpin that was bringing them to church is no longer in church no more. They're out in the season right now. Wouldn't it be awful that that soul was be held accountable today? Give an account for their soul today. And they didn't make it back to hear the word, to get born again. Wouldn't that be the awful saying? While you're in the pleasure for a sin for a season, and some soul will be snatched away that was possibly going to get saved if they was in the house of God. See, so you know how we're going to know, preacher? Well, you ain't going to know that. Oh, yeah. When the books are open, and another book's open, and the dead will be brought up and judged before God according to their works. We're going to be standing there at that judgment throne. Us saved people will be standing there. And the blood will be on our hands of their soul. And I believe God's going to look at that person as they're judging them. And said, your name is not written in this book. And as the blood starts oozing out of your hands, not your blood, but their blood. And God's going to look at you. He says, their blood is held upon you. As they're cast into the everlasting fire and brimstone forever and ever. We will be held accountable for this. This is not no game. We're not playing church. You just don't have church when you want to have church. You just don't serve God when you decide it's all the realm of the universe. Click in line and they, they're in clicking in line with me. Now we'll do something. It don't work that way. It's either going to be by God's will or not at all. Amen. We read some more verses of Scripture here. We're having so much fun tonight. Amen. Galatians chapter number 6. And we'll look at verse number 7. The Bible says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that reapeth, for he that soweth to the flesh shall reap uh, reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall reap of the spirit reap everlasting life. The Bible says, "What you sow, you will reap." Amen. Amen. God will forgive. Thank God for it. God will restore. Thank God for it. But you will reap what you sow during that time and the season. God won't fix everything. You made the mess. Sometimes you're going to have to live in it. Think about that. You know, we're going to go back here to 2 Peter here again. And I want to read some more. Now, we talked about over here where the Bible said that it had been better that you not even know who God was to know the way to righteousness than to know it and get entangled with the things of the world again. Is that what the Bible says? The Bible here also says, but... Now, there's that three-letter conjunction again. It has happened unto them according to true proverb that a dog is returned to his own vomit again and a sow that washed her wallow in the mire. You can whitewash the outside. Amen. Yeah. It's going to go back the same way it was. Amen. A drunk will come into the church. Oh, I want to get saved. I'm going to get born again. And I'm going to run up here to the altar. I'm going to get baptized. But you know what? If they just walk, watch outside, it ain't long. They're back here being a drunkard again. A drug addict will come and fall up on their knees. I want to get clean. Lord, save me. And, and get baptized and go through the motions. But you know what? If they didn't truly get saved, they're back into the drugs again. An adulterer will, will run up here and ask God to forgive them, save my marriage, and get baptized and go through the motions and want to get their name on a church membership. But if they get truly born again, they're out there committing adultery again. They're out there doing the same thing again. I'm going to say this. You might be saved here tonight. And what you feed the most is what's winning the battle in your home. If you feed the natural flesh, that's what's winning in your home. The dog only knows it return back to its life. That's all it knows. Amen. A hog, that's all he knows. You, you can scrub a hog up, scrub behind his ears, and, and take a Q-tip and go down his ears and clean his ears and his nose and put perfume on him, put a bow on him, and boy, he's so pretty. You know what the first thing he's going to do? He's going to find a mud hole. That's his nature. That's all he knows. If you're not saved today, the world is all you know. That's what you're going to live. 
And whatever, if you are saved today, what you feed the most and what you're pushing, desiring the most in your life, that's what's winning in your home right now. Is the world winning in your home? Is there peace? Is there joy? Is there happiness in your home? Is there true forgiveness in your home? Can you get out of the bed and everything's right with you and the Lord and you can just uh, raise your hands up to the Lord and say, buddy, I'm glad to be a child of God. Can you do that? Some people can. Some people can't. But I'm going to tell you, this is a warning from God. If you're living in that land of a season, seeking that pleasure for just a season, I'm going to give you word and notice right now, that season will end. Don't matter how well you've covered it up. Don't make no difference if wifey knows about it or hubby knows about it. It doesn't make any difference preacher knows about it or anybody at church knows about it. God will reveal all she will end. Amen. That pleasure will end. I'd get it right now. I'd just fall upon my face now. Maybe you know somebody that's in this condition right now. They forsook it, everything from God, pitched it out the window. They said, I'm going to go my way and I don't care what anybody else says. Just look at the devastation that's going to have upon their family. Upon their children. Upon their grandchildren. You know, we, we, we said this before. Uh, when a big tree uproots in the woods, I don't know if y'all uh, ever been in the woods very much or walked in and walking. When a great big oak comes up, root ball comes up, the whole thing comes up out of the ground. And that big tree falls to the forest, and as it's going down, it just don't take itself down. That tree spreads out a massive oak. It's got, man, it's wider than this building, probably twice as wide as this building, the limbs will go down. As it's going down, it's ripping small saplings as it's going down and crashes to the ground. Destroys those small saplings. Now you can go through and you can see where not all of the trees were devastated and snapped off. Some of them has got scars on them that will never heal. Those trees will grow, but you'll see a place on them. That's the big oak of the Christian falls. You might not take everybody down to around you, but there will be some with some scars. It's going to affect them. Some's going to be stunted in their growth in the Christian walk because of what happens to you. What you do matters. Amen. Amen. It matters to the person beside of you, in front of you, behind you. It matters. It affects everybody. Not just you. Not just you. It affects everybody. Maybe tonight... Somebody's on your mind right now. God clicked somebody in your mind you need to pray for. I'd pray for them tonight. Maybe you're well on your way to have this pleasure of sin for a season. I don't know. Maybe you need to ask God to give you strength and wisdom to sidestep it. Man, He gives some strong warnings in the Bible right here about us getting away from God and living according to the world's standards. It's not right. Amen. Bob, get us a song ready.